All right, welcome to SoFlow TV again, everybody. It's your host with the most. Check it. Before I even start this video, let me say that this is not a video for us to come fight Caribbean people to come fight against each other. I know that in the Caribbean community, I've heard it over the years, that there's some kind of secret beef between Trinidad and Jamaica, right? Mm -hmm. This video might be a little bit touching on nerves of both Jamaicans and Trinidadians. What I do want is for my Jamaicans to come and tell me on this forum right here in the comment section, are there illegal Trinidadians living in Jamaica? Have you ran into any? And if there are, or is it a lot of them, right? My Trinidadians now, Mo and them, come tell me, have you ran into any illegal Jamaicans or Jamaicans you believe to be illegal, or have you seen an influx of Jamaicans in Trinidad? And how are the Trinidadians underground in Trinidad taking it, right? Are the Jamaicans there good representatives of Jamaica or them a tegereg? Them a, they're the worst kind, you would say. I need some kind of feedback from you, all right? The story I have today is 20,000 plus. That means it's more than 20,000, but we're going to settle for the number of 20,000. 20,000 plus illegal Jamaicans costing Trinidad millions. So Trinidad is complaining that there are over 20,000 illegal Jamaicans inside of Trinidad and it is there becoming a burden to Trinidad, to the economy as far as crime, violence, um, economics goes, right? In other words, them say that they terrorize the place on all levels then. So, with that, let's go into this. Port of Spain, Trinidad, Trinidad and Tobago's former National Security Minister is claiming that there are over 20,000 undocumented Jamaicans in the Twin Island. The Twin Island would be Trinidad and Tobago, right? Which are a burden on the country and is costing the government to lose out on half a billion dollars every year. Hmm. Now, that sounds a bit... I don't know what to say. I probably could see some resentment on one side or the other. Or is this, a, is this a case of divide and conquer? Anyway, let's read on. So he's saying that his comments came on the heels of criticisms in Jamaica and called, that called for a boycott of Trinidadian products after immigration officers had turned away or refused entry to some Jamaicans that were trying to get into Trinidad, right? Now, you remember when this happened a while back? John, when this happened a while back, they were saying that, um, when this happened a while back, the Trinidadians got turned away. We were saying that, not we, but it was being said that what Jamaica needs to do is stop importing Trinidad products, take them off of your shelf, if you're in Jamaica and you see them, don't buy them. In other words, then, stop doing trades and businesses with them if they cannot respect us enough to leave us entry or give us entry into their country, right? And to, Or if they're treating us as less than human, turning us back for inadequate reasons then. So, he is here to say that it wasn't inadequate reasons. Let me read on. So Trinidad and Tobago's foreign minister, Dennis Moses, had explained that the Jamaicans who tried to enter the country in May 21st of 2016 were sent back home because they were likely to become a charge on the public purse. Charge on the public purse could mean that they're coming to the country with not enough money in their pockets to spend. They're coming to the country with maybe not a proper address where they're going to be staying at. They're coming to the country telling the... Uh, immigration officers, they're saying, how long are you going to be here? They're, they're saying, I'm going to be here for about six months. Okay, how are you going to sustain yourself for six months? When you're traveling to the UK, these are questions they ask you. And if you're not able to answer those questions, I've seen people turn back right at Gatwick, fly all the way from the USA, which is them flight, they are some 14-hour flight, all the way to the UK and they ask you these five questions and you answer them wrong and you're back on the next plane. You didn't even get a chance to leave the airport, right? So Trinidad has something like this in place. My thing to Jamaica is 
have something like this in place too. Not just for Trinidad, but for a lot of other people that are coming into the country. Jamaica seems to be one of them places that open up our gates and just let in every and anybody. Right? And I'm hearing that most people that are coming into Jamaica don't even get searched properly. So, you have tourists coming in with their supply of all kinds of illicit, illegal drugs. And all other kinds of things are gone. So, that might be a way, man. We might, we might want to take something out of this from Trinidad. Back to this little sour thing right here, though. I'm going to say sour because... It did cause quite a stir in the Caribbean community. It is indeed alarming that the Jamaican opposition would question the legitimate actions by our immigration officers as they attempt daily to do their job. After being abused constantly by a few Jamaican nationals who attempt to enter our country without the appropriate requirements and documentation, he said in a statement on Friday. So that was his explanation of why they were not allowed to enter into the country. Griffith said that as a result, some remain unemployed. He's talking about, okay, nothing is further from the truth, he's saying. Uh, in Jamaica, opposition challenges the laws of our country because of the recent protests by a few Jamaican nationals because they were denied entry into the country, which is simply a regurgitation of the situation where some feel that our immigration officers are obliged to let everyone in to the country or every Jamaican into our country at all times. The former National Security Minister said, nothing is further from the truth. As with each of the officers have provided sufficient and legitimate grounds for the entry denial. Every time a Jamaican is turned back and denied entry into Trinidad, we have given sufficient each officer gave sufficient uh, excuse as to why, why that person was denied entry. He insisted that the immigration officers in Trinidad and Tobago ought not to face scrutiny, but to be applauded because when they prevent undesirables from entering the country, it benefits the country, right? So Jamaicans, if we know a tegereg Trinidad no want to know, and if them can tell, say, yeah, take a wreck, them are turn your back right at the gate. That's what I get from this. Right? And by right, so, I mean, I'm tired of seeing Jamaicans and other people countries frigging it up and making us look bad. Like, people use that to judge all of us. So, that's why I want to hear from my Trinidadians, in Trinidad particularly. He said that these officers have to deal with Jamaicans who provide inflicted conflicting information on the reasons for their visits with their stories not being co corroborated by their intended host so you'll have a friend or so-called friend that you say okay i'm coming to work at his shop and i'm going to be employed there at, at renzi shop for six months when them check when the immigration officers check that person either don't answer the phone or the person says i don't know who name so Right? Something like that. Story not adding up. One of the reasons you're going back to Jamaica, you're not coming in the country. Right? Uh, went on to say that their story is not being corroborated by their intended hosts or hosted by other Jamaican nationals in the country with illegal visitor status. So, you have Jamaicans in the country that are already illegal, but them set up shop and they're inviting more Jamaicans to come in. And they're saying that it's stuff like that why they turn these people back. For me, this is rather weird. Seeing that how Jamaica is, our population is only 2 point something million, I believe it's 2.5 to 2.8 million uh, Jamaican people or people population wise in Jamaica. So to have like thousands of people in each one of these, like thousands of people in the US. Thousands of people in the UK, thousands of people in um, Canada, thousands of people in neighboring islands like Trinidad is talking about 20,000. It seems to be a mass exodus going on. In other words, then, the people of Jamaica are leaving Jamaica. I saw recently where they had a swearing-in swearing -in ceremony where people were becoming citizens of Jamaica. So it was funny to me and I was laughing because I was thinking, hmm, while enough people are run out 
no foreigners are run in and they're actually getting their citizenship but I realize that these aren't people that are poor broke people from countries that are doing so bad kind of thing these are actually people that are coming in to Jamaica getting their citizenship and using up all the rights that go with citizenship because they come from places that are probably more privileged so them have a little bit of savings so they come and they say okay I'm gonna go to Jamaica and open up a car dealership or I'm going to go to Jamaica and open up a restaurant bar and grill or something like that a data guan right it's all flow TV man like comment share subscribe leave your comment in the comment section below I'm not gonna keep this one any longer but I need to hear from my Trinis my Jamaicans matter of fact I need to hear from all the other Caribbean islands Barbados Antigua Barbuda Grenada all I know I want to hear if there are Jamaicans in your island if you think they're there illegally and are their good representatives of world citizens and I also want to hear the same from my Jamaican people have you run into foreigners that are there may not talk about them that are there to work you know and they're legally working there I'm talking about people who are unscrupulous characters you don't know which part them work or they're working somewhere under the table you know they're illegal here like the Trinity Gallo dance at the strip club or something like that it's so flow TV man like comment share subscribe leave your comment in the comment section below I am out Watch of here. peace February in the United States is Black History Month not only is it Black History Month it's tax season right so in keeping to tradition and supporting our own and keeping money in our community and doing business with people that have our best interests at heart because they're just like us I am going to send you to some people some professionals that can handle your tax issues in the right and proper way we're talking about WBJ taxes so if you own stocks and bonds mutual funds or rental properties if you own a home make donations or have medical expenses if you have a simple return and would like some step-by-step -step guidance listen there are IRS certified these people are IRS certified with professionals that get the job done right you hear me if you need documents notarized they specialize in property and personal income tax and they can expedite your returns through e-file they are located at 137 Evergreen Place East Orange New Jersey there are some hard-working people like me and you they are open six days a week Monday to Friday 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. even Saturdays 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. call them the number is 862 233 6157 the number is 862 233 6157 go see them before the IRS come see you and tell them SoFlow TV sent you. All right.